there's a lot of Roman grifters out there. There's big grifters and small grifters, black grifters and white grifters, male grifters and female grifters. Right wing grifters come in all shapes and sizes. And all of them are valid. Except for Jacob. Yes, sir. Are you both prepared for federal prison? Uh, no. <laughs> Okay, so I was gonna do this whole video with Iwa as like my rant sona because I'm way too anxious to put my face on camera, but it was way too much work, so this is what you get. So as you can tell, this video is going to be different from my usual fare of overanalyzing video games and TV shows people stopped caring about two years ago. Instead, I'll be overanalyzing a right-wing grift of people stopped caring about two years ago. So let's start at the beginning. Jacob Wall was born in California in 1997 and is the youngest person ever to be banned from the National Futures Association. Before that, he was locally known as the Wall on Wall Street. Get it? It's because he was running a hedge fund when he was still in high school. He actually had a lot of intricate financial dealings before and after his rise to internet infamy, although most of these dealings ended in disaster because he's a terrible liar, a habit he may or may not have picked up from his father, a Fox News commentator, defense lawyer, and conspiracy theorist. Keep these financial dealings in mind because I promise you, he first started getting famous on the internet for his tweets, and they're, they're just, they're just actually really great. I was at a hipster coffee shop, safe space here in LA, and the liberals were whispering to each other about how at real Donald Trump is doing great for the economy, got them a raise at work, and will definitely be re-elected in 2020. I was sitting in a hipster coffee shop in downtown LA this morning, and couldn't help but overhear six college-age women seated at the table who were clamoring with excitement and joy over the confirmation of Judge Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. I just left a hipster coffee shop in downtown LA. There was a group of young Democrats murmuring to each other that they know the suspicious packages were an inside job to make Republicans look bad. So the first thing you're thinking when you see all this is, he's a fucking idiot. And I mean, that's fair and also true. But the second thing is probably, why are you telling me about a bad tweeter? There's thousands of bad tweeters. You can't throw a dead cat without hitting a bad opinion haver, especially after the election with bad opinions at an all time high. Tommy's gotta learn to cope. You wanna get woke, go broke. Trump is the fucking goat. You stole the vote. What makes Mr. Wall. No, that doesn't sound right. Uh, let's go with Jakey. What makes Jakey different is he tried to dip his untrimmed toenails into the pool of being a real live Republican operative. With his longtime partner, Jack Berkman, he launched a series of poorly conceived schemes that went about as well as you would expect. The most famous of these schemes involves accusing Robert Mueller of sexual assault. Okay, actually, first he denied he was involved at all. He tweeted on October 30th, 2018, while Robert Mueller was still in the middle of his investigations into Donald Trump, that several media sources tell me that that a scandalous story about Mueller's breaking tomorrow should be interesting, stay tuned. The accusation was printed in the far right birdcage liner The Gateway Pundit, which Wall writes for, claiming a report from a company called Surefire Intelligence, a company Wall denied any part in, uncovered someone claiming they were assaulted by Mueller. Of course, these claims quickly fell apart. Turns out Wall was connected to Surefire Intelligence in that it appears that the managing partner of Surefire Intelligence, Matt Cohen, was actually just a picture of him with a filter on. The, the rest of the staff of the company appeared to be stock photos he paid for, it, or some he stole. Oh, and the company's phone number was redirected to his mom's phone. His his mom's phone. He's mom, mom. I need to borrow your phone. You better not be setting up a shell company and start a conspiracy again, Jakey. I'm not, mom. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So. He held a press conference, his partner showed up with his fly down and his accuser refused to show up at all, and the whole thing just sort of fell apart. The accuser denied being an accuser, multiple typos were pointed out, and emails surfaced showing that Surefire Intelligence tried to convince other people to come forth with no success. Even Gateway Pundit pulled support for the theory and the whole thing just sort of fizzled out. This wouldn't be the last time Jacob Wolf accused people of sexual impropriety. Actually, okay, this one, this one's pretty good. He held a press conference outside of Jack Berkman's driveway, where he brought out an accuser who actually showed up this time. There he announced that the 70 year old Elizabeth Warren had a month long consensual BDSM relationship with a 23 year old where at one point she scratched his back so hard it left scars. I, I just, 
Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. If, if proven, she would at the very least be cheating on her husband, right? Right? Nah, it turns out, even in this fabricated reality, she's in an open relationship. Long live a kinky poly septuagenarian president. As one reporter on the scene put it, This is gonna hurt Elizabeth Warren's campaign, because I think Elizabeth Warren fucks fucking slaps. <laughs> well listen, I, I will tell you, this may come as a surprise to you, but we're actually an apolitical operation. <laughs> Unlike the Mueller story that became a thing and almost went somewhere, as most stories fizzled out before anyone really cared. In this case, the only reaction Senator Warren had was this tweet, which is... <laughs> Alright, that's pretty good. Sometimes his scheming goes beyond his usual Scooby-Doo villain level when he actually starts getting himself in hot water. He's currently facing four felony counts in Michigan for allegedly funding a company that said thousands and thousands of fake rebel calls to the citizens of Detroit, misleading them about the November election. Considering how close the election was in Michigan, one could easily imagine a scenario where he actually managed to alter the end result in Detroit. Luckily, he was caught in order to stop before this could happen. Related to this event, it seemed like the duo also hired actors to pretend to be FBI agents to raid their home, and this was caught up by the Washington Post. Given this is an active case, I don't want to speculate too much on why the pair might do this, but let your imaginations run wild. Regardless, as the case goes through court, I don't want to comment too much on the possible end of it, but I think it's a good sign that he's actually being caught to these activities, assuming these charges are accurate, and he did do what was alleged. A few years in jail might help sort out whatever the fuck's going on in his mind. Of course, court cases take time, etc, etc. What? I'm sorry, what's that? Oh, it's a note. Oh, it says he's being charged in a completely different state. For securities fraud. Oh, sounds boring, but I guess we can go over that too real quick. So, as I mentioned earlier, at the tender age of 17, with help from his father and other partners, Jacob War created War Capital Investment Group, an investment company. Now, the thing about investment companies is that they shouldn't be run by fucking 17 year olds. Jesus Christ! So, this was a bad idea. And he was later barred from the National Futures Association for trading. But, why did he get barred in the first place? Well, his original company had an investment from a man from California. This was to the tune of $75,000. This man inquired about his investments. The wool company was apparently reporting high returns, but when he looked into it, he was told his money was lost. The man filed a complaint in Arizona, which resulted in fines and their disbarment. And then he killed himself. I'm not going to say that this was a one-to-one -one correlation but the man was scammed for a substantial amount of money and then later killed himself. At worst, Jacob Wall caused a man to commit suicide, and at best, he scammed money off of a suicidal man. Either of these is fucking disgusting and far worse than anything else he's ever done. So how can we only talk about his fucking goofball antics, not his actual crimes? So John Oliver had a segment on his weekly John Oliver Daily Report on Boris Johnson, highlighting his buffoonery. As a general tactic in life, if that's what you're driving at, it is, it is often useful to give the slight impression that you are deliberately pretending not to know what is going on. Because the reality may be that you don't know what is going on, but people won't be able to tell the difference. And that! Right there is the key to Boris Johnson, presenting his own lack of preparation so charmingly that you actually doubt he's unprepared, but he is. What is most interesting is the way Boris Johnson uses his buffoonery. Yes, I will keep saying the word buffoonery. It is a good word and you cannot stop me. The way Boris Johnson uses his buffoonery to hide his incompetence and cover up his more malevolent actions or comments. By creating this goofy persona, it makes it harder for the tough questions to actually stick to him, which makes it harder to get a true sense of who he is. This is a common tactic in the far right circles, creating layers and layers of irony and humor over dangerous beliefs to mask the more dangerous ideas. Thought Slime's video on the Proud Boys gives a good, concise explanation, so I'm just gonna insert that instead of doing my own work. Their rules include the idea that if a man is to not 
it must be within one yard of a woman. I Again, I cannot stress enough that none of this is a joke I'm making at their expense. The nut rules, the cereal thing, even the way Gavin McGinnis dresses like a Victorian barber are all entirely sincere. And I want to pause here because hearing this, it's easy to think of these guys as frivolous. These rules sound funny and quirky and maybe bro-ish, but ultimately harmless. And a lot of that is very deliberate. They want you to think that they're just goofy oddballs. This is a tactic a lot of the far right uses in their public facing communication. Have you ever wondered why the Klan uses such silly names for its leadership structures? Calling people Grand Wizards or Imperial Cyclopses or lopsided Jabberwockies or whatever? They did that at the time so that the Klan's formation could be written off as a joke. So do I think Jacob Wool is deliberately using his cartoonist persona to obstruct his more nefarious elements? Eh, maybe? Wool does appear actually not to be super savvy based on his videos and plans, etc, etc. But I do think there's an element where he'll play up these aspects, such as the time he staged a fake FBI raid on his house. Wait, wait, what? No, 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 that, okay, that is the wrong photo. Fucking skip. Just go to the next photo. The fake FBI raid on his house, which was around the same time he was being dead for his fake rubicol scheme. And there's the fact that he and his partners have been profiting massively despite their schemes. Jake Berkman's partner in law has been receiving multi-million dollar deals from the Pentagon, even though you'd think the association would make everyone at a 10 mile radius a pariah. And he's still making money treating people, tricking people, and generally just being kind of a sleazy scumbag. I cannot trust enough that beyond the buffoonery that Jacob will perform is a deeply terrible person. It's easy to find comedy in him sending death threats to himself behind protesters that protest his own press conferences. Things which, they, 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 these things actually happened. But behind the facade is a young man who would, if he could, fleece every one of his followers out of everything except for their skivvies. He cheated a man out of $75,000. And that man, later committed suicide. And it's easy to forget these facts when we stop to laugh at his antics. I'm not saying Jacob Wall is particularly dangerous. He is a fool of a grifter and far worse at it than most. And I'm not saying don't laugh at him. I mean, half of this video is just me laughing at him. But just to realize that looking a bit silly has its advantages. And we need to stop from time to time to think about the material realities of their actions. And this goes beyond Jakey Boy. There are a lot of right wing grifters who use layers of irony and humor and buffoonery to mask their behavior, such as the Proud Boys from the Thought Slime video. But there's many, many other examples as well. And most of these people are better at it than Jacob Wool. It's easy to laugh at the antics of fools and clowns. But we need to keep in mind that fools and clowns are paid to be laughed at, and there's always something more underneath. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. This one is a lot different than my usual stuff, but you know, it's been eating at me, and I think I just needed to talk about Jacob Wool and get it off my chest. Thanks to the Twitter account of the Jacob Wool Report, who gave me some great advice on sort of avenues to explore. Uh, they are the one-stop shop for all your Jacob Wall related news, so please check them out and give them a follow. And remember to hit that subscribe button. Please, please, if you don't, if I don't get 100 subscribers by the end of the year, they're, they're going to kill my family. Please, they're coming. Oh God, help. No, please, just, just subscribe. Ah.